Hey guys, how are you boys and girls? <clears throat> I'm back, it's me, Hebot. I'm gonna try to do a quick video to talk about a subject matter that I came up. Uh, that Modern Vintage Gamer did a video that it just has stirred the pot and now the community of, you know, the same usual suspects as always uh, is, you know, be creating ruckus, right? to just bring negativity out of something that really is expected because of the situation of how things have changed with modern times. We've always said, you know, we want convenience and accessibility. And in order to get those type of things, there's always going to be a catch. There's always going to be um, you know, a downfall, right? Or a sacrifice, if you will, you know? And of course, I'm talking about the DRM situation, which they're considering the DRM situation, are talking about with Xbox. And, you know, let's talk about it. It's me, he bought your boy, you know, uh, coming back at you with a video. And it's not so much just DRM because it's more about the fact that the Xbox is doing certain things for the gamer, for us, right? That in order for us to... In order for us to have these privileges, it has to be done a certain way, right? Whether it's because of the console, uh, because of, of the old games, and that's basically the preservation of games, which they have, you know, very been been very forward with, and have been very adamant about. Let's see it here. They have been very adamant about for. A long time, um, you know, since they started talking about how they want to preserve the generations of consoles and moving forward, everything will keep going with you. But because of the fact that these consoles are built in a way where the lens of the, the, the actual system doesn't read older discs, it's through like an emanation system to make it free, right? In a lot of ways, because then you have to, you know worry about pressing disc uh, for example uh, separately because this is the reason you know which is more expensive this is the reason why Sony opted to give you and sell you let's say games that are cross-gen they'll send you sell you two versions the PS4 version and the uh, you know PS5 version because it saves them the headache of having to deal with the engineering situation and what they're doing um, as far as when you play the games and at the same time they can make more money because if you buy one version or the other or you want both versions you have to you know basically buy the game twice and us with you know us Xbox fans and on the Xbox side we don't have to worry about that because we basically um, we basically get all the updates and all the games with smart delivery for free, right? We we pop in the game and in order for us to play the next gen version of it unless it's a native game that's only for the Series X, like the Medium, for example, or Judgment right? Or Devil May Cry Ultimate Edition, for example it has to get that download, right? That Those, those, those codes, those uh, identification uh, numbers to make sure that it identifies the games. So, if we want to have this type of accessibility at no cost, this is kind of the sacrifice that comes with it. Now, I'm not saying that this is a good thing because DRM is about the licensing. In this case, it's not that you can't, you don't have the license because if you bought the game, you have the licenses. If you buy an Xbox One game, 
it's on it's on that disc it's the Xbox One game is version of that game and it can't identify the enhanced version for the Series X unless it does it through the online identification to identify it and then it gives you the version of it right so it is it is something that is worrying some but we live in an era where everything's online right so most people have online and you can even use a hotspot on your phone to get that identification and once it's updated and put on your hard drive or your internal you can play the game offline at any time you want right it's just a matter of getting that authentication and some places you know don't have don't have uh you know online the way that we do in some parts of the world which is one of the reasons why you know uh it makes it very controversial now the thing that's getting me upset is that these outlets are are trying to go about it and speak on it like microsoft purposely did this deliberately did this to take away all our rights and that we don't have rights to none of our stuff and that they're trying to take us for fools and they're trying to you know hurt us and they're trying to get our money and yet we don't have ownership of our stuff right like it's a purposely done thing when the reality of it is it's they're doing this because this is how we're able to get things like the pro boost in the boost modes the enhanced modes on older games and even the next gen mode with smart delivery for older cross-gen games or last generation games for free right at no cost unless the developer chooses to charge you right and that is what rub is rubbing me the wrong way because these guys that have bigger outlets they know that they have a responsibility to the audience and to when they say something so that they give out the right messaging but this is nowhere near in the you know the intentions that Microsoft has created and had. And one of their engineers, guys that handled it, had a you know a interview and addressed it, and he said, "Yeah, we must do better." And you hear these people like Rich with Utech, for example, saying like, "Oh yeah, you know there's a problem." Like if they, he was trying to say that Microsoft should know better, right? When it's never been a lie. It's been transparent how the whole thing works, right? It's just now with these next-gen consoles, obviously, this causes a brand new dilemma and problem. So, Microsoft is aware and they're already going to talk about it internally. And the guy said he's going to make sure that he addresses it and that it's, you know, uh, focused on and that it's addressed. Which tells you that that they didn't intentionally do this, right? And people are going to be, oh, yeah, well, they never would have brought it up unless this guy didn't brought it up in his channel. And I'm like, okay, yes, but he brought it up in his channel because he's been fishing since they did the, the DRM thing with the CMOS with PlayStation. So he's been fishing and fishing to look for something to talk about about Microsoft. I don't know if it's intentional in a bad way because... He's trying to play both sides of the fence. But the point of the matter is, if he's responsible, what he should have said is, I encountered this situation, and it's uh, a big issue that I think, um, by me making this video, Microsoft will be able to address it, will be able to figure something out, and that way it will help us, the gamers, long term, and we don't have to worry about not being able to have access to our library that we, buy, that we play or buy. Instead of making it seem like it was a conspiracy theory. Because some work, games work that don't need no time authentic, of authentication, uh, whether they're physical or digital, but it's very little, very few. It's not all, right? And again, this is an issue. I'm not defending or damage controlling and saying that this is a good thing. It's not. It's not a good thing. But what I'm trying, what I am saying is that this is not something that Microsoft did intentionally. It's all circumstantial due to the structure of how it's created on Xbox, the console, for us, in order for us to get those games for free, right? And the free, free upgrades and the boost modes and, you know, being able to play the old games on OG and obviously um, from 360, right? Um, because the licensing is also has to do with the companies and the licenses that they own. 
Because if you don't have the license, then you wouldn't be able to play the game at all. Even if you go online and get it authenticated at one time and it's ready to play. No, then it wouldn't work ever. So every time you buy a new console, you have to authenticate it on that set console because it has to know that it's a new console and that you actually own it and that you're not stealing it or that it's not yours, right? Or you're stealing it from somebody else because it has to do a lot with security as well, right? That is very, very big thing that Microsoft, Microsoft does on their consoles so that they don't have breaches in people's accounts. And that's why they have such a good track record. So, you know, what I'm saying is, you know, Microsoft already knows they're going to address it and they're going to have to try to figure something out, which I'm pretty sure though they will because they can go about it two different ways. One, okay, well then they're going to have to start something as separate games from last gen or this gen, if it's cross gen, and we pick the one we want to buy, either the Series X or last gen. Or they're going to have to do and figure out a way where when we put the game, if it's the last gen version, we can't play the next gen version. It lets you play it, the last gen version and lets you play it offline without having to get authenticated. And it just lets you replay that last old game or that old version. And let the console identify the games from the 360 and the OG by letting the lens that is in there read the games instead of having to go through online in order to play it through the emulation that they have in their servers because it does have a lens in it they they, they want you to install it so that the lens doesn't have to spin and it doesn't do damage on the disc and it doesn't uh, uh, you know and, and it costs you know for cost efficiency so or you know from this point forward built their consoles where they have lens that spin and read all those different discs whether it's OG 360 I don't know how expensive it would be or how hard it would be OG or Xbox Series X and moving forward with any other console that the lens has to read all those discs so if you have it digital or if you have it physical or at least if you have a physical you can pop it in physical and you can play off the disc or again that it does the, the, the computing and lets you play the code of the game on that disc without having to authenticate online and just let you play the game as is as long as you have it installed on your console so you know there's gonna there's ways that i'm pretty sure they can approach this and i'm pretty sure they will and that uh, they'll figure it out so what i say to you guys is you know just relax give them time because these things take time but to just come out real quick and start acting like oh microsoft just wants to take all our rights microsoft is thinks they're slick they're trying to hurt us that's just being ignorant and being irresponsible and basically trying to clickbait for the viewership for you know the fake the sake of the clickbait not because you actually care about the fact that gamers can lose the ability to play their games even though they're going to sell it to you oh the, you know can, gamers should be concerned this is not this is not the way it works why should this be uh uh i pay for these games you understand what i'm saying um because yes you can play it on playstation but that's because you're 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 paying for two different SKUs. so that's why you're able to play it you know it's not like you're buying one disc and you can play the last version and the new gen version for no cost especially with the exclusives and a lot of the third parties unless it's something they charge you which in that case should not be any excuse you should be allowed to play no matter what because you're paying for it like with the sports games and things like that or call of duty for example right so again i'm not doing this video to damage control the situation because it's something that sh needs to be addressed and it's nice that at least that a retro gamer guy he discovered it right so that microsoft can get the awareness and realize that potentially long term could be a very big issue and de facto for a lot of people but to create 
chaos unnecessarily. Like if tomorrow there's no internet service or like they're never going to be able to fix it or like they don't have the money to deal with it if something happens, like if a server goes down and that we won't have no access to our games whatsoever ever again, it's kind of, you know, irresponsible and ignorant. You know, I can't respect people on YouTube that are influencers, especially ones with big platforms, doing these types of videos just because they want to create that chaos to create that divide because they know it's, you know, it's going to bring clicks. They know it's going to bring views, even if it's negative. They know they're gonna, it's going to bring uh, all this fake drama, like, oh, my God, fuck Microsoft. I hate them, blah, 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 blah. this, 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 that. You know, Microsoft needs to fix this. This needs to be addressed because, you know, a lot of people like myself, we have a lot of games, thousands of games. I have physical like 3,000 games and, and digital. I have like 1,500 games and maybe even more. So if anybody should be concerned more than anybody is me. But I still have the old consoles like the 360 and the, and the OG Xbox to play those old games on them. So I'm still kind of protected in certain ways. But at the same token, right, you don't hear that much when it comes with, like, Nintendo consoles. That they switch the complete format of how you play it from a disc to a microchip. And you lose everything you have and they resell you everything all from scratch. And it's okay. Everybody praises it. Nobody looks at it as something negative. You see what I'm saying? The hypocrisy. You see? Or when they bring out games that is theirs digitally and they tell you it's only for a limited time and they're going in the vault and you can't buy them anymore when it's their IPs, they don't lose anything. They can leave it there as long as they want for the rest of their life, as long as they exist, because it's their property. They own it. There's no reason for putting it away. But yet they'll act like it's not to make you create hype. Oh my God, I got to get it before you can't get it no more. And people go spend money and make you spend more money real quick to create higher sales as a trick. That's a form of trickery to create high sales, right? They did it with the Mario All-Star game that had the three games, Sunshine and, and the Mario 3, uh, 64 and things like that. They did that to create sales, and it did, because immediately after they did that, when the last day of availability for that game became available or came to be, as soon as that passed by, a week later, they mentioned the sales for the Mario All-Star, that it sold tremendously with all these numbers, right? It's the same thing that they would do, you know, for example, with PlayStation games, right? If PlayStation changed their format, like when they did with the Vita and the PSP, right? So, my point is, my point is that you can do these things, right? And bring out the messaging as a YouTuber or influencer, right? Or as a Microsoft fan, or even as a Microsoft hater. But do it with that responsibility, not with ignorance, not acting like, you know, Microsoft is trying to take everybody for suckers, not acting like it's a drama and that they're, 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 that they're evil, that they're trying to hurt us, that they're trying to take all our, our, our privileges and all the stuff we paid for. No, that's not the way that you should approach it. And that's what I'm upset about. Because that's all I've been seeing all around. Because let's be honest. Even when you have games, because here's the other problem. You've been noticing lately on YouTube, on, on the scene of, of, of YouTube, a lot of gamers are making videos, especially retro guys, angry at the price hikes of a lot of games, or retro games, that they're going up exponentially to these ridiculous prices that you know very well shouldn't be those prices, but they are due to limitations of availability. Meaning, the longer and the more time passes by, the less consoles are gonna be available from that or those older eras. The less consoles are gonna be available, I mean, gains for those consoles. Unless it's something that wasn't popular, like Atari wasn't really as popular compared to like the 360, so you'll still be able to find an Atari, but it'll be expensive, right? But something like the 360 that was so demanding, so popular, right? It's going to get harder and harder to find because if they break down and you can't fix them, there's not enough lens to get them fixed. If they stop manufacturing them, 
then during the course of time, they're going to get more expensive to get and acquire the consoles. And you're going to have to use them less and less because you have, the fear is going to be if I use them too much, they're going to break down and then I can't play my games. You see? And that's what's happening with games as well. That they're getting too expensive and they're becoming more and less and less limited because they either get ruined, scratched, or broken or stop reading because of whatever happens to the disc due to temperatures or whatever. And then you can't even play the game. You got to go out and buy a new copy of the game. That's why my brother Unlimited, for example, he did a video talking about how he was trying to look for Otaki 1 and 2 for OG Xbox. And they were well over $150. There are some games on PlayStation, for Christ's sakes, on PlayStation 1 and 2, that if you go and try to buy them right now, they're like $800, almost $1,000, like, like for Sega Saturn, the Panzer Dragoon, right? Or Panzer Dragoon Saga, the, 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 the actual... RPG, right? That game was only a limited of a thousand pieces that were made at that time, right? When Saturn was out. And those games are harder and harder to find. So you can see them as high as eight hundred to a thousand dollars when you go find them. Especially if you're trying to get them complete with the manual or sealed. So that's also another dilemma that retro gamers and gamers in general are facing you see but we live in an era where if technology grows it's going to come with a price it's going to come with sacrifice and these are the things that have made mediums like cds and music and even with movies on streaming services where it's becoming more about the services and less about the ownership where you just pay for the fees for, you know, uh, monthly and you have ex access to it much whenever you want, but you don't really own them. And I know that idea is not something that people like because I don't like it either. But it's just the reality of it is long term to keep it preserved is going to be expensive and get more expensive and get more expensive because of the limitation or the lack of the availability of those set things like CD players and DVD players and HD DVD players and, and uh, Blu-ray player, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Or, or consoles, laser disc, record players, cassette players, beta maxes. The less and less are available out there in the market in the world because of the fact that years and years have gone by and it's just they, you know, there are less and less of them available out there, the harder it's going to become, right? To preserve it, and the more expensive. That's why you see vinyls now selling for like $30 a vinyl. When back in the day, you'd go into a record store and buy a vinyl for like three bucks or two dollars. You buy a single or even an album, it'd be like 10 bucks. So anyway, um, I just wanted to do a video on it again. I'm not damage controlling. It isn't an issue um, that needs to be addressed, but it's more of a circumstantial thing. It's not really about DRMs and the licensing. It is to a certain extent, but it really isn't exactly or directly. It's because it needs to make sure that that disc is owned by you and it authenticates to give you the ability to play it on the new console with the new enhancements or an older game on the newer consoles. Which, again, either they put lens that can read all those discs that going forward on all consoles or do a, a for, firmware update where it allows the lens in the game console already, like the Series X, to keep playing any disc, right? At least so that you can play the, the physical version of it. Or when it's digital, at least, or when you put the disc, it allows you to play whatever's there and it decodes the disc when you download it without needing an authentication, just let you play whatever version's there. If it's the old version with lower resolution, worse graphics, worse frame rates, then you can at least play it. But at least you have the accessibility to play it offline. Because I don't think online's going anywhere. We're going to be online for the rest of our lives or in existence, I'm pretty sure, as a society and a human race, because... It's just too common, it's too accessible, it's too much uh, uh, 
convenience and be, it's going to evolve and just get better, right? <clears throat> so that's my thought on it, guys. So, you know, I, I just, <clears throat> I don't like that they already running with it to make it seem like Microsoft is this big monster <clears throat> of a company, <clears throat> like they always do. Like they're these evil entity, like they're trying to take our rights away because they're evil, evil, evil. That's not what it is. Microsoft is aware of it. They already know. And I'm pretty sure they're going to address it and they're going to try to make it better. And all we have to do is just be patient and let's be positive and give them good feedback so they can fix it where it works perfect for everyone. And that it doesn't backfire. And that way it makes it the process easier and not harder, right? That's what real gaming and influencers out here in these YouTube streets and scene. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't like the video, guys. As always, love you so much for always giving me that support for all you that continue to support me. Because without you, this channel is not sustained. As always, share the video with someone you think might like it. If you're new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate you. Thank you for all the good um, uh, positivity that you got from me. And if you subscribe, thank you so much. Because I know you didn't have to. But if you did, just remember... It means the world to me, so because I know you didn't have to, so I consider you now part of my family. As always, you can find me on social platforms like Twitter and Instagram under Hebop Powerful Gamer and on Instagram C underscore Respect. I am suspended currently or concurrently on Twitter, but I don't know. I should be back in a month or so. <clears throat> you can still follow me there when I'm back, or even now, and you'll see me when I come back. Um, you, if you want to make any types of donations to my channel for me to showcase anything, you guys know how to do it. Just hit me up in the DMs and any of those social platforms. And I'll be more than glad to, you know, uh, and honored to do so. Because, you know, it'll mean the world to me that you consider me in that way. And if you want to help out any way, shape, or form to better my channel because you like what I do and you want me to have better content or better it in, a, in, in just a good way to make it grow, you know how to do it. It's all down in the description below with the with my information, with, you know, my Patreon or even my PayPal account. Guys, this is HeBot signing off. Love you guys. I'll see you very soon in the next one. Bye-bye.